Given sigma notation, and using equations we previously used, we can determine the sum of various types of series. Two equations that can be used to find the sum of an arithmetic series are Sn equals n over 2 times a1 plus an, and Sn equals n over 2 times 2a1 plus n minus 1 times d. The equation we will use depends on the information we can find. An equation we can use for the sum of a finite geometric series is Sn equals a1 times 1 minus r to the power n over 1 minus r. The sum of a divergent infinite series cannot be calculated, but an equation for the sum of a convergent infinite series is S infinity equals a1 over 1 minus r. We will be using these equations as we go through some examples. In our first example, we're asked to evaluate the series represented by this sigma notation. We see there are no terms with a variable in an exponent. So this is an arithmetic series. We'll start by finding the first few terms and the last term. For the first term, we put in 3 for x, giving us a value of 15 minus 2, or 13. For the second term, we put in 4 for x, giving us a value of 18. For the third term, we put in 5 for x, giving us a value of 23. Because the values of x range from 3 to 10, this series has 8 terms. For the last term, which is term 8, we put 10 in for x, giving us a value of 48. We enter the values of the terms we determined up here. From these terms, we can easily determine that a1 equals 13 and d equals 5. There are a total of 8 terms, so n equals 8. And the last term, a n, is 48. We'll start with one of the equations for finding the sum of an arithmetic series. We put in 8 for n, 13 for a1, and 48 for a n. 8 over 2 is 4, and 13 plus 48 equals 61. 4 times 61 is 244, so using this equation we get 244 as the sum of this series. This is the other equation we can use to find the sum of an arithmetic series. Let's see what this one gives. Putting in 8 for n, 13 for a1, and 5 for d gives us this equation. 2 times 13 is 26, and 7 times 5 is 35. 8 over 2 equals 4, and 26 plus 35 equals 61. 4 times 61 is equal to 244. Therefore, using this equation gives us 244 as a sum for this series. We've now evaluated or found the sum of this series using both equations for the sum of an arithmetic series. And in both cases, the sum is 244. Let's do another example. We're given this sigma notation and asked to evaluate it, which means we need to find the sum of the series it represents. Notice there is a variable and an exponent in the function. This tells us that this is a geometric series. Let's find the values of some of the terms. For term 1, we put in 0 for t. This gives us 2 times 3 to the power 1, which is equal to 6. For term 2, we put in 1 for t. This gives us 2 times 3 to the power 2, which is equal to 18. For term 3, we put in 2 for t. This gives us 2 times 3 to the power 3, which is equal to 54. Because the value of t ranges from 0 to 5, there are a total of 6 terms in this series. Now we'll go to the last term, which is term 6. We put in 5 for t. This gives us 2 times 3 to the power 6, or 2 times 729, which is equal to 1458. We'll write the terms we have up here. Looking at these terms, we can easily determine that a1 equals 6, and the common ratio r equals 3. And because t goes from 0 through 5, there must be 6 terms. So n equals 6. Because we're dealing with a finite geometric series, we can use this equation to find its sum. We'll insert the values for a1, r, and n into this equation. 
3 to the power 6 is 729. 1 minus 729 is negative 728, and 1 minus 3 is negative 2. This works out to 2184. So we can state that the sum of this series is 2184. Let's do one more example. We're asked to evaluate the series represented by this sigma notation. We see that there is a variable and an exponent in the function. So this is a geometric series. And because y goes to infinity, this represents an infinite geometric series. At this point, we can find the first few terms, starting with y equals 1. Because y equals 1, term 1 is 1 quarter to the power of 1 minus 1, or 1 quarter to the power 0. So the value of term 1 is 1. For term 2, we put in 2 for y, so we get 1 quarter to the power of 1, or 1 quarter as a value for term 2. For term 3, we put in 3 for y, and we get 1 quarter to the power 2, or 1 16th as a value for term 3. For term 4, we put in 4 for y, and we get 1 quarter to the power 3, or 1 64th as a value for term 4. We'll write the terms of this series up here. Because it's an infinite series, we can write dot 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 at the end. Looking at the terms, we can easily determine that a1 equals 1, r equals 1 quarter, and n equals infinity. Because r is between 0 and 1, this infinite geometric series is convergent, which means we can determine its sum. We can use this equation to find the sum of a convergent infinite geometric series. We put in 1 for a1 and 1 quarter for r. 1 minus 1 quarter is equal to 3 quarters. And 1 divided by 3 quarters is 4 thirds, or 1 and 1 third. So we can state that the sum of this series is 4 thirds, or 1 and 1 third. In summary, we can use the following steps to evaluate a series, given the sigma notation. We start by using the sigma notation to find the first few terms and the last term of the series, if applicable. Next, we look at the sigma notation and the terms and decide whether the series is arithmetic, geometric, or infinite geometric. Using the terms, we then determine the values for a1, d or r, n, and an if needed. After that, we use these values and the appropriate equation to find the sum of our series. We can pick the equation we need from this list. It would be good to memorize these equations.